Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Jake. And this is Neverland, Neverland Navigation, Navigation Radio. Radio. Where we... <laughs> I got nothing for you. Yeah. I cannot help you this time. Where oh, we... I've never helped you. <laughs> Where we get on the boat, see the presidents, and... Yeah. Die, unfortunately. The... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wait, a wait, trip wait, wait, wait. I, I want to uh, eat some... Fish and chips. Mm, that is part of lucky for you. Lucky for me. There's a pit that's stop. the only place to eat here. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. Oh yeah, there's one. There's more. also a restaurant and yeah. that that place where you can buy random stuff, including giant pickles. Mm, if you haven't put it together yet, we're talking about <laughs> Liberty, Liberty Square. Square. <laughs> Yay! I think a lot of people would say this is the boring part of Magic Kingdom. You think? Yes, because of the Hall of Presidents. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, God, it was so much more fun when they had the Muppets. Yeah, you mean I have you don't to love agree. the whole story about them not having bathrooms for authentic purposes and having uh, brown rivers going through the middle? To... Would you explain what you're talking about well, in case yes, somebody doesn't know? Yeah, I did explain it once on the podcast, oh. but <laughs> but in case you haven't listened to every episode and hung on my every word, fake fan. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks for listening. We were... Okay, I, I don't know if this is rumor, though. I don't think so. I think this is Speculation confirmed. on our podcast? <laughs> we would never. <laughs> never. Um, so, the the word on the street... <laughs> <laughs> on what street? <laughs> uh, the cobblestone street. Mm. You know that one. <laughs> I, oh, I know the street. <laughs> is that there are no bathrooms in Liberty Square... And there is like a kind of brown trench like like way that water flows, you know, <laughs> uh, to simulate realism of the time of the colonial times when there were not bathrooms. <laughs> so people were throwing their waste out of their window. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That, wow. That's it. Do you believe that? Do I believe that that's really why they didn't put a bathroom there? No, no, no. Do I believe that's why? Do you believe that's why? Do there's I that believe brown are... river? I don't in know. The they would never, right? I don't know. It's tough. It's tough because they're so good at details. Right. It's a little they're bit like of a head scratcher. So, so, so good at details that I'm always like, oh my gosh, you put all this time and effort into this thing that's like the size of a dime. You know what I mean? Mm, literally. Literally. And also, I think in the 70s, they had no way of knowing that this would be discussed ad nauseum on message boards <laughs> and yeah. podcasts like this fine yeah. program. Um, so maybe they just didn't even put a second thought sure. into, oh, well, people will, you know. Well, and I... <laughs> discuss. As someone born in the 80s, I guess there's also the chance that we don't really know what was like openly okay talked about in like the 60s when this stuff was being thought up. Sure. Just, and I'm only saying that because of... The fact that there's like a lingerie store on Main Street. Right. Because I don't feel like that would have happened today. It had a great name though. The Wizard of Bras. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten. Um and it certainly wouldn't have happened like twenty years ago no. or thirty years ago, like when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh but in the 60s, they're like, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's put this in our theme park. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying, if if that was a great idea, let's put this in our theme park, then mm-hmm. maybe this uh, sewer-looking thing is does make sense. It adds I, up. I honestly, I didn't know. I didn't, I guess, either didn't pay attention as a child or didn't put any thought into it. I had no thoughts on this matter at all until I saw it on the internet. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Same, same, same. So surely nobody even really cared until somebody posted and said, "Well, it, guess it's, what this But it's like anything else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, um, gosh, what is it? it? In the Liberty Tree, in Liberty um, Square, there are 13, what, something like... Jars hanging from jars. the tree. You're right, which is representative of the 13 original lanterns, colonies. Lanterns, I think I mean. Lanterns is, is lanterns? what I was going to say. But yeah, that maybe sounds it is, more right. I don't know. It's one or the other, I'm saying. <sighs> anyway, um, and that's representative of the 13 colonies, but like, would you have known that if you... No. Would you have even stopped to count? No. 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 Yeah. But I do like that tree. I, 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 like, I like all these little like fun facts. Even the river? <laughs> 
I guess. Is that your favorite part? Of <laughs> no. Liberty Square. No, but it's a good, it's, it is a fun fact. When we decided that we were doing Liberty Square, because we break up our topics by geographically by land, by theme park. So it was Liberty Square's turn. Yeah. So when we came across our topic for this week, um, I think we both thought, what are we going to do? Because we can't both do the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> right. So I have to do something. So I'm really anxious. I guess anxious. Excited to hear what you picked is okay. the right word. Because... I'm excited to hear what you picked because you always pick something out of left field. Yeah. And yeah. It's not cheating. I promise. I'm within the confines. We'll see. Within... I did already like accuse him of. <laughs> in the car. Yeah. <laughs> On the way here, I was like, did you pick something even in Magic Kingdom? Did you pick <laughs> something in Epcot because it had the word liberty in it? I couldn't even make it here without this harsh scrutiny being directed toward me. Well. <laughs> but it's okay. I've earned it. I've done, so, I've done some reaching in my day. But uh-huh. today we're, we're on target. So who's, who's going first? You are. Because I won rock, paper, scissors when we did Frontierland. Right. See our previous Frontierland episode <laughs> for an epic duel yeah. of Western proportions. Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. Um, this is, I, I had no idea what to do. There are so few things to pick from. Um, but I thought I remembered reading that there was a horrific guest injury in the queue to this attraction. And so I tried to Google it and figure out what I would, what I had read. Um, but it turned out that I had read something that had occurred in the Disneyland equivalent of this attraction. Um, so I'll get back to that at the end if you want. But more relevantly, <laughs> I ended up learning about something else major that happened in Walt Disney World history that I knew nothing about. And it was all through researching the Liberty Bell Riverboat. Okay. Which is my topic for today. Hey, that's actually in Liberty Square. Hey, I did it. <laughs> I, I, I would even rules. call that a ride in Liberty Square. Yeah. Which is a bit of a stretch. I don't ride. It mm-hmm. It's but it's not really transporting you. I was anywhere. gonna say it's like transportation, but, but you are not going yeah. anywhere. It's like when they introduce, as we learned on the Main Street episode. Both when the Disneyland Railroad and the Magic Kingdom Railroad debuted one stop yeah, on Main yeah. Street. You're not on circle. here to get somewhere else. Right. You're on was, here for the experience of being on a train. That was the vibe of this, too. Yeah. Not, and really the thing that... Um, I mean, like Star Tours. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you go get to the a- other side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to the gift shop. Um. The real central question here is, did you know that the Magic Kingdom Rivers of America used to be home to not one, but two riverboats? I did not. And that is the setting for our tale. I cannot wait to tell you the fun way in which your thing is going to Uh, um, have like a little crossover with my thing. I cannot wait. One of my favorite parts of doing this is Uh, when our stories... Has a little crossover? Yeah. I wonder if you know it. I don't, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what you're up to. All right. <laughs> but I know what, I guess I'll have to start there. Okay, go on. I want to start with what, There were two boats. There were and two now boats. there's one. And now there's one boat. And how that happened is fascinating and um, changed the course of this attraction's history forever. And it was one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever read about Disney making backstage and I can't believe I'd never heard of it before so keep listening this is not the injury this is not the injury okay. this is a completely separate incident okay um and keep listening if you want to hear how Disney made a massive mistake with one of these river boats um and we're gonna start just like we always start at the beginning of time <laughs> <It feels like. laughs> the big bang yeah the big bang <laughs> Um, I think we jumped back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think we're jumping back. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to start all the way back in 1894, which is back farther than I think we've ever started. Whoa. On July 9th, 1894 in Maine, um, a guy named Joe Fowler graduated second in his class at the U.S. Naval Academy. Oh, wait, no. That's when he was born. Okay. <laughs> that was two sentences put together. Oops, sorry. Um, so he was born in 1894. So and, slightly older than Walt. Right. Okay. And then he graduated 
the academy in 1917. He was a veteran of both world wars, and he designated uh, and supervised the building of gunboats in China in the 1920s. Interesting guy. Is that a movie? The build? No, no, no. The building of gunboats. So the construction of the ships. Oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, um, yeah, he was like a prolific military engineer. I just keep imagining guy. that this has to do with Walt, and then I was imagining they were both wound up in production. We're, yes, I'm jumping. We're I'm gonna jumping. get there. I know this is totally out of. We're actually field. talking about military stuff, right? Okay, but I promise wild. this is all act- actually really consequential to this okay. entire attraction. But it is. I'm here for it. Random to start with this, this <laughs> military story, but here he is. Um, he designed. Uh, aircraft carriers, including the USS Lexington and the USS Saratoga, which were the largest aircraft carriers in World War II. He was also in charge of all of the Navy, U.S. Navy work conducted in the West Coast shipyards during World War II. Um, after 35 years with the Navy, he reached the rank of Rear Admiral and retired in 1948. So that's his, like, that's the background of this guy, Joe Fowler. Um, and this is the part of the story where he meets Walt Disney. Okay. Um, Joe met Walt through a mutual friend. At the time, he was heading a residential construction um, project in San Francisco. And through mutual connections, he ended up having this discussion with Walt Disney. And by the time they had gotten to know each other, Joe was working for Walt, which is a way that Walt had with people. Um that he formed instant connections with them and got them to buy into big commitments. And the commitment that he bestowed to Joe was, you're going to build Disneyland. Okay. So this guy who was like revered in the military for these massive construction projects, um, basically randomly gets into a conversation with Walt Disney and he is pl- placed in charge of the construction of Disneyland and would go on to manage operations at Disneyland for a decade after it opened. So all of the um, all of the development, the practical development of Disneyland was put into Joe Fowler's domain. You, wow. you make the fabrication of this thing happen, which is a lot of trust with yeah. the culmination of Walt Disney's dreams. So he must have been really impressed with his military resume. Yeah. Such an interesting blending of backgrounds here. Yeah. Walt Disney, who had military experience, was a railroad enthusiast, a turned, you know, cartoonist, meeting this guy who is like a mastermind builder from the military and being like, you're the man for my <laughs> theme park, build my castle. Right. It's just so fantastical. Um, so he builds Disneyland. And then overseas... Castle included. Castle included. Wow. And then sees overseas um, operations of that park for like a decade. And then in the 60s and 70s, he's like, all right, now build Walt Disney World. <laughs> so uh, he does. Um, and at one point of the project, Joe held three posts under the company umbrella. He was the senior vice president of engineering and construction for Walt Disney Productions, chairman of the board for WED Enterprises, which is now Imagineering, and director of construction for Disney's Buena Vista Construction Company. Busy, wow. Busy guy. Yeah. Busy guy. During this time, uh, Joe Fowler made an impact on the development end of Walt Disney Productions, second only to Walt Disney himself. He brought the dream to life, for sure. Massive part of Disney history, Joe Fowler. And now that we know a little bit more about him, are we ready to talk about some river boats? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. All right, let's take the story closer to home. Okay. The Admiral Joe Fowler Riverboat was built at the Tampa Ship Repair and Dry Dock Inc. Company in Tampa, Florida. We're from Tampa, so that's pretty cool. We are. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are there? Do you know if there's relation to Fowler Avenue in Tampa? Oh my gosh! Amazing you don't know? question. Morgan's quizzing me. I, I don't <laughs> well, know. That was a weird question because... No, but that's a really... I didn't even make the connection. I'll find We out. have a local road here named Fowler. A local huge road. Yeah, super important um, road here. Continue. Uh, okay, <laughs> got you. Good, great question. Um, and that's the same place where Walt Disney World's um, railroads for steam locomotives were refurbished. So, hey, remember the locomotive episode? Yeah. Well, hey, got some Tampa connection there, too. The riverboat, the Joe Admiral, I'm sorry, the Admiral Joe Fowler, entered service a day after the Magic Kingdom Park opened in 1971. So this is 
the equivalent of their steamboat Mark, Mark Twain attraction on this coast. And then on May 20th, 1973, a second riverboat named the Richard F. Irvine entered service in the Rivers of America. So now we've got two boats in the Rivers of America. Okay. Very cool. It was named after the Academy Award-nominated art director who Walt Disney recruited to help to head the design and planning for all Disneyland attractions, including Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion. So he was in charge of the planning and the actual structural design of the attractions, and Joe Fowler was in charge of all of the construction and fabrication. So two guys who actually put, you know, steel and concrete to the ground and where yeah. Disneyland up. So in late 1980, this is, okay, so at this point of our story, we've got two riverboats happily transporting guests along the rivers of America. Just like? Just like in rotation. Okay. And it's a wonderful thing, and it's beautiful. And then something so early in the story, but something so crazy happens that I could not believe. It is regular maintenance, apparently, for these boats. I don't know if you've ever seen images of um, the riverboats going across um the Seven Seas Lagoon, because they're being taken for maintenance. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's some interesting stuff. But apparently they're regularly taken out of rotation from the rivers of America. They are dry docked, so they're hoisted by a crane, and then lowered down, and then they're serviced on a dry dock. Dry docked is what they call um, when they take cruise ships in for refurbishment as well. Yeah. Okay, so, yes. So this... It has come time for the Admiral Joe Fowler uh, riverboat to be dry docked and refurbished. Okay. And the unthinkable happens in 1980 in a crane hoisting the Joe Fowler drops <gasps> the boat. Oh my God. So when, I, when did you say this was? 1980. Was anybody hurt? I looked extensively for more information about this. And it is really, really hard to come by. The only thing, of, because... I would imagine nobody was hurt. Right. Because Disney is so, you know... Right, but yeah. Protective right. of their news situation. Um, I think it's hard to find details of what the actual day was like. And I think if there were, however, injuries or even deaths, I think we would know about it. Yeah. So I don't think there were any injuries, but let me tell you what was injured. No relation to Fowler Avenue in Tampa, oh, by the way. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a bummer. I was, yeah. I was dreaming with you for a second. <laughs> um, something that is injured beyond repair is this boat. Oh my gosh. The Admiral Joe Fowler is the hull of the ship is deemed... It's total. Unrepairable. Yeah. Uh... Total. So that's kind of a heartbreaking um, a situation there. Something that I don't think the scale of that mistake has ever been repeated. Oh, yeah. In terms of like... Can you imagine? Walt Disney maintenance. They, they destroyed that boat. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. So imagine you're just at work on your dry dock one day. And you know that they're doing repairs or maintenance on the Joe Fowler. And all of a sudden you hear screeching metal. You see sparks, dust kick up. You turn around and the crane has dropped the boat. Wow. Whoa. That's crazy. Now that is some Disney history that you don't hear about very often. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so. I that, bet it was at like night or something too. Yeah, I don't. Do you think? See, you never see this stuff happen, so. Yeah, I don't really know about, I don't know enough about how they service like the boat. Right. Things to really even understand. But the impression I got from this was that it was like devastating, which is. Terrible. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so <laughs> that goes down. Um, the riverboat was dropped and its hull was completely destroyed beyond repair. The riverboat was taken to a boneyard for a while uh, before being broken up for scrap as it was decided that the Magic Kingdom Park at that point no longer needed two riverboats, leaving mm -hmm. only the Richard F. Irvine as the area's only riverboat. Sad, lonely little single riverboat now. Um, the Admiral Joe Fowler's steam engine machinery was shipped to Tokyo Disneyland, though, to be used as part of their Mark Twain riverboat, which is pretty oh, wow. cool. And its whistle. This is it's like favorite. an organ donation. It is. And this is actually my favorite part. Its whistle became um, part of the Walt Disney World Railroad's number four Roy O. Disney locomotive. 
So the whistle of that locomotive is the old whistle. Of... I wonder if they've ever named anything else after him. Well, just hold on. Uh, in 1996, the Richard F. Irvine Revolt that we've been discussing, the second one, which is now the sole survivor, was completely refurbished and returned to service as the Liberty Bell Riverboat. So that's the one that we have today. Um, one of the ferry boats that travel between the Magic Kingdom and Ticket and Transportation, actually it's Transportation and Ticket, I'm not reading, <laughs> is named Richard F. Irv- uh, Irvine, having been renamed from Magic Kingdom 2 in 1997. So one of the ferry boats, because now that boat was renamed from the Richard Irvine to the Liberty Bell, now one of the ferry boats is named the Richard Irvine, which is cool. Admiral Joe Fowler, the man, passed away on December 3rd, 1993, at the age of 99 in Orlando. Wow. But tributes to him can be found in parks, uh, including the ones he helped build. The Windows, I would imagine. Um, No, it's the harbor that they use as a dry dock for Disneyland's SS Columbia and paddle wheeler Mark Twain. That's called Fowler's Harbor. Okay. And there's a building there known as Fowler's Inn. Um, and then at Walt Disney World, the other ferry that transports guests across the Seven Seas Lagoon to the Magic Kingdom was rechristened the Admiral Joe Fowler in his honor. Oh, so now the names of the river boats are now the names of the ferry boats because they used to just be called Magic Kingdom One and Two. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, what we were talking about, um the dry dock that Disneyland uses to service the SS Columbia is named Fowler's Harbor. The SS Columbia is the ship that had that horrible guest incident that I was talking about that I thought was <laughs> was the thing that I was researching. But it led me to find out that they dropped an entire boat. <laughs> and I didn't even know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's the abridged history of the Liberty Bell. Okay. And now are you going to tell us about the... Sure. I was, I was just going to ask not? if you want... Was I what? Were you not going to tell us? Well, I was going to leave it open to you. I didn't know if you wanted to hear about a horrific injury or not. Well, <laughs> um, this is... I a, don't know how to answer that. Yeah, it is... Okay, that's a fair point because they're, you know, it's a little bit morbid, okay. surely. But at the same time, I think things like this are really fascinating because Disney goes through an effort to maintain an image of safety that mm-hmm. they largely, I think is largely warranted. Yeah. They're very safety conscious in general. But when things do go awry, uh-huh. how it's handled, how it's covered, and the details can be interesting because it's such an exception to the yeah. rule. And as people who are interested in theme park operations, um, you know, um, I'm trying to open an LA Times article, which is the information that I have about it, but it's not loading. I guess your internet doesn't Yeah, work my right. internet's not working. Can you, uh, do you want to get off of Wi-Fi and see if it'll work? Yeah, that's what... Uh, There's another Wi-Fi. That's what I'm up to. Why don't we start your story, and as a treat at the end, we'll treat... A treat! We'll treat listeners to the horrific... <laughs> oh my god, okay. I'm just joking. I know, it's funny. You're, you're okay, funny. okay. All right. Um, so here's how I'm going to tie in. Oh. All right. This is something I was going to say at the end because it's chronologically something that is newer information compared to the history. First of all, are you guessing? You don't need to guess, right? Oh, I didn't ask you to guess for mine. Well, I would not have been able to, so (laughs) there's that. Did you do the Hall of Presidents? I did not. What did you do? I did Haunted Mansion. Oh. Because I knew you were going to pick something obscure. Yeah. So I figured I would go with the all-time favorite. That fan makes sense. fave. I didn't know if you would be concerned that I would also pick a Haunted Mansion, like, deep cut story. Okay. I guess I was. Haunted Mansion, but I'm glad one of us did. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. And that's what I was thinking. How, we can't do it without doing the star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Michael was saying, because he's the one that takes our... our uh, what we're going to do and Topics. not like we, you know, that way we don't know. He's our screener. Yeah. He's like, I feel like this balance, the way you guys do it where he picks something obscure and then you pick something fan fave, it kind of balances. Yeah. You get, yeah. I think it's good that we get to do the headliner though, because yeah. what's Liberty Square without Liberty the Haunted Square Mansion? Liberty Square to me is the home, just that that's what it is. And it's you have the to place walk where you go. all those presidents. <laughs> I, I don't mind the theming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but it's not like you know. I stopped going to Hall of Presidents when people 
started taking it too seriously. Yeah. So that's that. It's become a little tense in there. It's tense in there, and I just don't want to deal with that on my vacation. I don't really care what side you're on. I just don't want to. I think a lot of people agree with you. Yeah, it's a vacation. Yeah. Well, I mean, not for us. It's not vacation, but it's my happy place, and I don't want it messed up with with tense. The beauty of being a local, though, yeah. is that we get these tiny little vacation feelings. Yeah. It's my happy place and I wanted to be happy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, totally agree. So I did Haunted Mansion. I'm wearing a Haunted Mansion shirt and I was like, I don't know if he's going to notice this. I know it's really. Oh. <laughs> it, I try, I covered it up with a sweater until we got in here. Hello, audio only listeners. Yeah. Morgan yeah. is wearing a Haunted Mansion shirt I, that is only Haunted Mansion. On the left side. On the left fifth. <laughs> yeah. And the <laughs> back. Her, oh, is but, it? Yeah. I do love the color of your shirt, though. I, I knew you would love the color. I was like, Very he's just going to think I'm wearing his favorite color, and that that's that. That is what that. I thought. That <laughs> is what teal, I thought. you guys. Um, but, okay, I do love some undercover merch, though. Stuff yeah. that you have to, like, look a second time to. Yeah, and I was trying to hide it from you. Ooh, it's a re- Oh, right, it's yeah, a reveal. It's a reveal. Um, and actually, I don't think our even our visual uh, <laughs> people can see it because of my computer being in front of me, but whatever. <laughs> I should just stop. Imagine. I'm going to start th- wearing shirts that aren't what I picked to throw you off. Uh, <laughs> it's a fake out shirt. Yeah, it's a fake out. You're not going to know. Um, anyway, so I've got a little bit of a, a crossover between your thing and my Ooh. thing. Okay, so um, part of the your tour, <laughs> the boat tour, involves passing by the Haunted Mansion in a, in a place called the Howling Dog Bend. And while you're passing by, they tell you how locals say that this mansion is haunted, apparently due to having been constructed on an indigenous American burial ground. Really? Yes. This is a story exclusive to the Walt Disney World version. Yes. Obviously, when we're going, I'm going to be talking about uh, haunted mansion history because they were kind of built at the same time. They didn't open at the same time. The Disneyland version and the Disney World version. I'll be talking a little bit about the Disneyland version, too. This is exclusive to the Disney World version and a story that you only hear if you take the boat tour. Nice. Yeah. I was not aware of this. I guess I missed that segment of the boat tour. Trivia, yeah. I love when they add these these little... First of all... It's an Easter egg is what it is. Yeah. This is lore you will only be able to observe if you pay attention to the riverboat there. Right, right. Love it. Yeah. Deep cuts for the fans. Yes. Um... Okay, so I'm just going to dive in. Dive in. Okay, so for Walt Disney World, which is always what, you know, that's our, that's what we do. That's our bread and butter. So for Walt Disney World, this was an opening day attraction. Okay, so the, the uh, ride, though, it's got, like, a really interesting and lengthy history where they started thinking it up really, really early before Disneyland even opened in uh, 1951. And, um... But it didn't open in Disneyland until, I think, 1969. Right. Um, so. Just prior to Walt they were World. And they were basically being built almost simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Um, A rare thing to happen, kind of. Very, very. And our, so ours, like, was built and set empty and open and ready to go for over a year. Oh, I think I'd heard something like that once before, but I never understood why. Yes, and it's because they were just like, kind of, I feel like getting a, a two for one. You know what I mean? Oh, Maybe not a two the... for one, but like. Well, they could like. Okay, share. we just did this. So yeah, here, right. now you do this and we know exactly how to do it. Or or maybe ordering even ordering the animatronics simultaneously. Sure. Yeah. I'll take two. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. I bet that saves them a lot of money. Yeah, too. I think so as well. Yeah. Um, animatronics are very expensive, and this is, you know, full, full right. of them. Um, wow, there are so many. Yeah. One of the reasons I love the ride. I know, I know. Me too, me too. Yeah. It, it's a classic. I, I'm happy with the way that they occasionally update it, mm-hmm. in that it keeps its roots. They don't make any changes that upset people. I, I haven't heard of anybody being upset when they're adding something right they mostly just add they, yeah they don't take away exactly the which things is that, a good philosophy. and the things that are taken away i feel like are so small and not you know what i mean does that yeah, make sense most people i don't think would even notice exactly if yeah i don't really i'm not super familiar with the changes to the haunted mansion so i'm excited to hear actually i was it's funny that you say that because i wasn't really going to go through i started looking at, at them and they're so small um but oh, I, I will i can oh, go gotcha. through them 
Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, um, the I, never mind. I don't want to jump ahead because I was going to start naming a couple of them, but I'm sure there are some that you're going to talk about. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe. Um, like the Escher room is really the main. Well, actually, can you? No, I don't know anything about okay. it. Okay. So. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Most of the the changes have been, like I said, pretty small. Like a thing here and a thing there. When they did the big thing that added the, the stair upside down stairs and stuff. Uh, I, I'm going to come back to this when I have more facts. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, Sorry to derail. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so I'm going to jump back over here. <laughs> Sorry. And my cat is going crazy. Aw. <laughs> is, is it the black cat? Yes. Well, there you go. Perfect. No, so we're talking about the haunted mansion. <laughs> yeah. So, so this started being developed in, in 1951. And this is back when, and you, if you're like a super fan and you're on the, the internet looking at like old things that resurface, you've probably seen the art that they did, like um, concept art of the carnival type uh, Mickey's area that they were going to create across the street from the an um, animators uh, area in Lake Buena Vista, California. Uh, right. Um, Mickey Mouse Park. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Aww. At the even in that there was a haunted mansion. Really? Yes. Wow. So this is like an original exactly. concept. Love that. So the in the concept art, there it's like kind of like a, a street with the these kind of rides and stuff like that. Right. And then there's like a windy road going off of it that has mm. a church, a graveyard, and then a, a haunted mansion. Well, look at that. Up on a hill. Right. Um Classic. so so all the way back, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fifty one. This is so so early in the plans. Although at that point yeah. that's that's the extent of it. Um Ken Anderson was originally tasked with creating this and it was planned to be a walkthrough. Oh yeah. You know, as that's this happens. Yeah, this happens. This happened with Pirates, which is one that I talked about when we did Adventureland, mm -hmm. if you want to go back and hear that one. Yeah. Um, so it was planned to be a walkthrough. Um, he was tasked with, with creating ideas and stuff like that. This ride went through so many, oh, here's an idea. No, I don't like that. Here's an idea. No, I don't like that. Here's mm -hmm. like, like just, or... We like this, and then it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of contention. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like the ideas are very... And passed around a lot. Yeah. This project. Um, and then, so, after he got put on this project, way, way, way uh, too soon before, like, way, it, this would be like a leak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they, they put on a map... A, a souvenir map that there was going to be a New Orleans square that promised a thieves market, a pirate mac wax museum, and a haunted house walkthrough. Wow. So, like, this is years before it opened. Yeah. It's a weird thing to kind of pro have out there. As It's like how we're always complaining. Don't tell me stuff's coming. Yeah. But Disneyland... That, and then it not, you know? Yes. Disneyland did historically, though, occasionally put up, like, signs and stuff for attractions well before they did were they all there. Did they always make it no. in one form or another? Yeah. Sometimes they would replace the banner with opening 1971, and then 1971 would pass. And oh, then no. they would just change it to opening 1972, and then 1972 would pass. Just, that, like, put one, a stick or two over yeah, the one. that did happen on occasion, so that's not... It it is surprising though that all all of that information made it out because that is quite the promise. Well, it was on a map, yeah. Right. But like, if you're gonna put it on a map, then you know people are gonna read. That's a, a three attractions that they yes advertise, it's and and none of them are accurate. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, they didn't when it actually being... comes, to, I don't know what thieves market meant. I'm picturing the okay. Adventureland market that we currently have in Adventureland because Aladdin's a thief at because, the beginning. I do too, yep. but that doesn't mean that's. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a fact. Yeah, I'm just saying that's what came to mind. Yeah, same, same. Okay. That's exactly what same. came to my mind. But then, like uh, chronologically, it doesn't make sense, right? Because who's Cause Aladdin? It, right, it right. was Aladdin. <laughs> this is what um, makes sense. Yeah, so anyway, 
So that was on on this map years before it opened, which was wild. Oh, I bet that map is selling for like a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet so too. Wish I had that map. Yeah. Um, so I was saying that uh, the there was a lot of denying different ideas. Um, so right off the right at the get go, like I said, there was that that concept art that had that Mickey Mouse mm-hmm. area with, and then it had the haunted mansion kind of off to the side. Well. Walt was like, I'm, I'm not having some rundown building in my beautiful mm. park. Mm. Like <laughs> that was not going to happen, <laughs> which was sure always that it's always what you think of when you're, if somebody said to you, Hey, you create a haunted man- mansion, mm-hmm. create a spooky house. Right. It's going to be kind of dilapidated looking. Yeah. Monster house, haunted house, creaky old. Yes. Every, everyone that you see on movies and stuff like that, they're not nice looking anyway. No. They, they wound up going with nice looking, as you know, in Disneyland. It was like he gave them a challenge. Make yeah. it pretty on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. exactly what he wanted. That's, a, I, in my opinion, a big Quite challenge. Quite the challenge. And yeah. I don't even think, I, I'm pretty sure that it was him that found the one, although I, I could be wrong about that. The reference. That. Yes, because That's it is cool. like a carbon copy of, of what they wound up modeling after. The Walt Disney one? The Walt Disney World one? No, the Disneyland the Disney, one. The plantation. The Disney stuff. World one does look spooky from the outside, don't you think? I think it like I don't think it's pretty like the one in Disneyland. It's got a little bit more of that like gothic. Feeling. Yeah, gothic. And yeah. even the like solarium part of it, that like green big window part of it, I feel like it just gives me the vibes of a creepy mansion. You know what I mean? Yes. So concept art that Ken Anderson was drawing had like these like overgrown weeds and like spooky mm. stuff. Right. And then that's what Walt was like no to. So kind of when I read this and then I think about our haunted mansion, I'm like, oh, he did not get what he wanted here. Because I, I do think ours has that look. It doesn't yeah. look gross. Yeah, like it, it doesn't look like it's going to fall down or anything. Right. But it does have that classic scary and that's not what he wanted. Right. It is, I feel like it's a compromise because it is pretty. It is like a nice building, but it is definitely creepy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, and that's eh. not what he wanted. Right. But I feel like in Disney World, it's more forgivable because we have so much space and land. And mm. it's not like, like in in Disneyland, you're in New Orleans Square. Mm. So... You're you have to walk the New Orleans Square to get to a bunch of other things. Where our haunted mansion in Disney World is like you go there for that. That's why you're there. There's no reason you're there otherwise. You don't have to walk by it to get to Yeah. To It's at a corner. And it also really is in its own little land. It's in its own corner. Because yeah. it doesn't really have anything to do with Liberty Square. You can't see it like in your castle picture or anything. Like any no. of your like it's in its own world. So if they ever decide to sh- to move away from that area being Liberty Square, it would be easy if because the Haunted Mansion has nothing to do with Liberty Square yeah, anyway. Yeah, right. Know? I agree. Yeah. Um, right. Where the New Orleans thing, I mean, the, it looks like a New Orleans, which it's not. Um, right. That, that, here, I I guess I can jump. You mean the architecture? The looks, architecture. So right. the house that, that the Disneyland version is modeled after is called the Shipley Lidecker House. And it was constructed in Baltimore City, Maryland in 1803. And like, if you look at a picture of that house, you're like, oh, hey, it's the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's no longer around. Um, it's a, it was a three story, 20 room house. That's a shame. Accented by raw iron porch railings, large pillars and impressive gardens. The pillars are the distinctive feature that make me think. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's like almost a carbon copy from the, from the outside, which is cool yeah. and weird. <laughs> yeah. But they do a, they did do what he wanted. So it's not an eyesore i guess if it's not something you're right. interested in um so anyway there's that i i definitely understand that desire in disneyland to not have yes be. because of the space you have to walk by it to get to other things i get it too i get yeah, it too and new orleans square i don't i i really like the idea of new orleans square more than liberty square yeah um 
I just think it's more fun. It lends itself to more jazz. Yeah, and yeah. Food. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a little more lively. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Muppets helped. <laughs> now the Muppets are gone. So I, I do back love, to patriotism. Yes, I do love history. So there is something that I like about um, Liberty Square from a historical point of view. Me too. Um, the gallows. Are fun. Yes. Oh, <laughs> there Sorry. goes his phone. I drop my phone every pod. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like our hidden pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so Ken Anderson, who was the original person tasked with this, had some big ideas, mm -hmm. and uh, they were like all shot down. But I'm going to name some of them because Ooh. they made it really far, and there are elements that are in the ride that we know and love today. Cool. So one of his, maybe his biggest idea was for this to be um, a story of a sea captain who killed his wife and then was haunted by her, I think her name's Priscilla, wearing a bride's dress throughout mm. the mansion until the end where he hangs himself. Wow. Because he's been driven crazy. Okay. So elements that you might recognize from the, the ride we know and love are, A, the sea captain, which is in, in a framed picture in Haunted Mansion. Right. And very heavily featured in the new Haunted Mansion movie. Right. Um, the Bride. Right. Not the same story, but still a bride. Right. And then the hanging part at the beginning where it's kind of like the owner may, have, may be the one that hung themselves. Right. You can see the seeds of the idea. Exactly. It's kind of kind like... Kind of cool. Kind of an Easter egg for mm. Ken Anderson and all of the work he put into it before ultimately not even getting to be the one that does it. It's just like um, <laughs> Thunder Mesa. How they'll put yes. little tributes to Thunder Mesa and Big Thunder Mountain. Yeah, they're so like, that... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about uh, those 10 years of your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, other ideas that were largely his was the mansion being home to a murdered family and a ghost wedding party that had well-known Disney villains. Ooh. Oh, the, another thing about this uh, sea captain thing I forgot to mention because I forgot IP to write it. in the note. 1950s? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Whoa. Wild. Um, and, and again, shot down. But there's more IP mm. that I'm going to get to. More p IP ideas I'm going to get to. Wow. Um, so another thing I forgot to mention, which was a, like, uh, effect. An effect that, that they discussed... That I think they had even figured out um, was to have the sea captain mm -hmm. come in, like you're in like an area, and again, this is a walkthrough in this mm -hmm. scenario right. where this boat comes in and the sea captain is telling this story, and it's like a two minute story, but during that time, he's he's dissolving into a puddle of water. Yeah. <laughs> and so at the end, he's a puddle of water, and then that kind of disappears. Whoa. And so for them to have the ability to make that look like it's happening. Or think they could have or the think ability. They could, yeah. I assume it'd have to be similar to the ballroom scene mm -hmm. in my head. Pepper's Ghost. Yes. Perhaps. Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. Wow. Because this, remember everyone, this is pre- Projection yes, mapping, I, I, it, automated when I, The motion. first time I'm imagining it, I'm imagining a screen. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no. Well, <laughs> let me walk that back in yeah. my mind. How could they have done this back then? Oh, yeah. well, this ballroom scene, which is done with glass and yeah. project projection. Yeah. Not, well, kind of. No, it's like a reflection. Yeah, reflection. Um, it's more accurate. For sure. Yeah, it is more what it was. So that... Mirrors. <laughs> that would, was a wild intricate concept and it got to the point where the the reason that it really wouldn't work is because this room that they were planning on doing it in would only hold 10 to 15 like walkers mm. and it took two minutes which is like such a really long amount of time yeah. to like hold up 10 people waiting and then the next 10 people like yeah the parks t by today in today's standards never 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 could work right. but even back then this was a busy part yeah I'm picturing imagery that's almost similar to, there's an Islands of Adventure attraction called um, Poseidon's Fury. That's like a walkthrough special effects yes, attraction. Yes, I've been to that, mm -hmm. but like 20 years ago. And it's like very, 15 years ago. it's very like that. You walk through it, there are practical effects with water and mechanics and all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can see 
the vision yeah. for this, even back then. Right, you know? right. But it's crazy that they had those thoughts at that time because what a big swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this was a sea captain thing. They also kept coming back to a pirate's idea because mm. the movies that featured pirates back in these, this day were scary. They were mm. always scary. Right. So um, that was a, an Black idea. Blackbeard's ghost. Yeah, that mm. was an idea that kept coming back. Um, they also heavily considered using the headless horseman which was ip for them mm. um and would have fit in yeah yeah i could see it in the graveyard scene i could too i really am surprised that it didn't wind up there and wouldn't be surprised if it comes at some point if one day they do like if they're like oh let's, world let's add put. <laughs> yeah but not like the cartoon version like the version that we mm -hmm. have in uh I almost said boo, boo to you. you. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. The parade, yeah. yeah. And not, the not-so-scary Halloween party. Right. Um, and an idea that Walt really liked was incorporating the lonesome ghost, which... I don't know that. Yeah, but you do. You just don't know it by its name. Oh. I had to look it up also because I was like, oh, I don't know that. And then I looked it up. It's that, this, that Halloween cartoon with Mickey and Goofy and Donald and they're like, they're ghost... Um, hunters or whatever mm. you maybe you don't they have flashlights yeah yeah and, and they're wearing detective caps and then yeah. these ghosts call and like prank them and they're like oh we have ghosts in our house and then they're like ha ha, ha. i think i have the vaguest of vague memories of it's, this yeah i to me i was like oh that's that cartoon from my childhood mm -hmm. it's not it's from the like 30s oh. <laughs> um but well, i hey. saw it a bunch when i was a kid and yeah. right now it's, it's on disney plus oh. on the like things you should watch because it's halloween season mm. skeleton dance yes exactly that. exactly okay. got it when i was little there was a like game that my brother and i used to play that involved like a vhs and uh cards and it was kind of interactive oh i had a game like that yes. it's called harbinger <laughs> Okay, yeah. that's not what this one was called. I looked that's it okay. up at one point. Yeah. Yeah, but um, we used to play this game all the time, and uh, it had that cartoon in it. Oh, So in my head, cool. it's part of this game that I'm sure almost nobody remembers. Wow, VHS board game yeah. technology. Remember? Yeah, VHS board games. <laughs> that's what it, yeah. Yeah. There's no better encapsulation of the 90s than yeah. a VHS <laughs> board game yeah. tie-in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so Walt liked that idea, I think as a, um, what is now the ghost host mm. to have the lonesome ghost be like the ghost host. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Got and that. would have been IP. Um, it's funny how many ideas were like thrown around and shot down and stuff like that. Um, I love the level of like, it's so sacred to them. It has to be perfect. Not, yes. not just any idea can make it through, even if it's a good idea. Yeah. It has to be the the best of the best idea. Right, right. That's well, and, and he clearly had something in his head, but he wasn't able to express it or right. something like that. He'll know because, it when he's easy. Yeah, everything was was kind of getting turned down. Mm. You know what I mean? Sounds frustrating. It does sound frustrating. So they they announced the ride. Um, hold on. They announced the ride with handbills um, that were given out... I want to say uh, 1963, something like that. Um, and then from there, there's like a six-year delay, but there's a lot of reasons for this delay. That First of all, the Wor New York World's Fair happens, which mm -hmm. basically makes everybody have to pause right. and refocus on those things that are going into that. That It's a small world. It'll be worth it, I promise. <laughs> yeah, and the carousel was, of but... progress. Yeah. The, e everybody's... Um, whole job got shifted to this yeah um and then of course walt died so that i i didn't read anything saying this but i could see why it didn't come out right soon after that because it would have seemed in poor taste don't you think sure yeah yeah i i just i get I, it I, I didn't read that i'm not saying that but mm -hmm. but his death had an impact on okay well who's doing what now yeah and the whole country's perception of Disney right. as a brand. You know what I mean? Like, it was major news that he passed. Right. So, and you could to see them not wanting to. Yes. Themed exactly. Exactly. It would be a lot. Yeah. Right. Right. I right. see what you mean. Yeah. Um, after the World's Fair, uh, Imagineers such as Mark Davis, Exitensio, and Claude Coates contributed ideas to this project. So now we've got 
multiple Imagineers that are like, hey, I want in on this. Yeah. And at Here that come point, the legends. Yeah. At that point, Ken Anderson left the project. Oh. It, I did could I didn't read whether it was like frustrated left the project. I'm just done with this. Left the project. Got taken off the project. I I didn't see anything. Well, I. I and there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen at this point. Yes, and the recurring theme of like denial, imagineering <laughs> denial, imagineering <laughs> stories is that once um once an imagineer has taken like a a full fledged swing at something multiple multiple times, getting new blood into the project <laughs> is important, and sometimes it's better to start over, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah. Not, not entirely start over, but just, you know, clean slate type of thing. And like that you happens said, in Disney history. at least there are basically some Easter eggs in the current one that I, make me feel better about the time he spent yeah. on it. And you know what I mean? full story beats and stuff yeah. that came from the original version that were just evolved yes. into different stuff. It yes, yes. Like. Um, big impact. Another Imagineer that wound up being a big contributor is Raleigh Crump. He was young at this time, um, and he showed Walt some designs for his version, but they included some bizarre things. He took a bizarre twist to it, like a coffin clock and um, talking chairs and man-eating plants, a uh, living gypsy wagon and a mirror with a face. Um Walt liked his ideas, but not for the Haunted Mansion. He wanted a separate restaurant put Ooh. next to the Haunted Mansion, like the Blue Bayou that's in Disneyland, but for, for Disney World, I guess. And for Haunted Mansion and not Pirates. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. Maybe it I was wish for that Disneyland. Existed. Yes. And it's something that just went away eventually. And right. he, they also just dis discussed with him doing a pre-show that involved his ideas, hmm. but not having his ideas integrated. But as we know, they kind of were. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a that. Couple. Yeah. Yeah. There are some things like that. I miss that. I I think the house of weird stuff that yes. came yes. out of that yes. is some of the most interesting developmental stuff. So it's sad that it didn't end up going anywhere. I think it would be an incredible um theme to put in like a restaurant or even a gift shop now yeah you know what i mean yeah that'd be cool something yeah, yeah. i don't know what like if it's super creepy if that would make for a good restaurant would it maybe that's why they decided not to do it, it just, in my head that makes sense right maybe like a gift shop or an interactive experience or something that would be well cool. and the gift shop that we have now the um memento memento mori, mori yeah it does have a creepy, bizarre feel to it, but yeah. it's not very big, so right. It could if it they is expanded such a tiny it. Little thing. It is so small, yeah. Um. So he and uh, no, not he. Mark Davis. Hold on, let me see. I'm this auto corrected a name, so I don't know what the first name is. Uh, somebody, you know what? I'm. I'm gonna What's the last name? Graces, but I'm not even sure if that's right. That could be a an autocorrect too. Gracie? Well, no. <laughs> Just yes, yes, it is. It does say Gracie. Oh but yeah. That, is that right? I don't know how to get back to. Yeah, because Master Gracie is named. After... I know, but oh, it is it's named after an Imagineer. I think so yeah. Oh man. Okay. Anyway. See, um... this is me trying to. As Morgan is telling me these things. You know, it's popping into my mind snippets of the Disney show behind the attraction. Yeah. Because they did an episode of a Haunted Mansion. And as she's telling the story, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember them talking a little bit about that and the, yeah. the thing. Kind of fun. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with Gracie for now. I don't have a first name. but I, Oh, Yale. Yale. And that's oh, why it, it changed yeah. it. It's like, that's not a name. That gotcha. is a name. Turns out. Uh, turns out. Um, the biggest anyway, twist of all. So, so Yale Gracie and uh, Raleigh Crump were were put in charge of effects mm. for a while. I'm telling you, this thing was like all over. Yeah. Um, and so here's a weird story, right? So in in the like area where like the animators building was and stuff like that, mm. they made like a little haunted house. Where they could test effects. Uh, cool. Right? Cool. 
Um, oh, what I would have given to go not that hot little. Mess. It was like a large workshop. You know what I mean? To, yeah. That way they could make effects, test effects, stuff like She's that. She's got a she shed. He's got <laughs> a full scale test haunted house. <laughs> um, they and one night they decided to play a prank on the night cleaning crew, which is so mean. You guys don't play pranks. That's awful. And so Crump explained in an interview, which I got this this story from uh, Wikipedia. So I'm not sure where originally he explained it to him. What sure wasn't Wikipedia, but thank you, whoever the made the Wikipedia down interview series. <laughs> Wikipedia, um, he said, "Quote: We got a call from personnel saying that the janitors requested that we leave the lights on in there due to the creepiness of all the audio animatronic ghosts and such." We complied, but put motion sensors in the room that would extinguish the lights and turn on all the ghost effects when triggered. The next morning, we came in and found that the ghost effects were still running and there was a broom lying in the center of the floor. Personnel called and said that the janitors would not be back. Mm. I He did tell the story on Behind the Attraction. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Talk about things that would never happen today. <laughs> I know, I know. A, I'm like, I don't know if I like this story or hate this story because I feel bad for the people that had to endure it. But surely they, uh, okay. At least they know it's Disney. It's not like. And surely they knew that building was where the haunted stuff was because like, it's not like that was the first night of the, yeah that building being there. So, you know. Well, they were mad enough to quit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were just disrespected by the level of prank. Yeah, I would be. <laughs> I would be. How dare you? Yeah. I clean up after you and you try to scare me with your robots. Yeah. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, they should have scared Walt. <laughs> he would have taken that well. You think? No. Oh, <laughs> Definitely okay. not. I was like, is he known for appreciating pranks? I, I don't appreciate pranks. I don't think so. Um. Anyway, that's so that's why I that. Don't prank you. The Thanks. only way I prank you is by doing outlandish topics on the podcast. And that quite the prank that is. I'm like, that's not a hotel. <laughs> we're, we're doing hotels. I did a water park. <laughs> you did a water park. It worked. It, it worked. was in a hotel. It was. Um, so Mark Davis and Claude Coates, uh, they disagreed on a lot of the, the stuff. Mm. Um, one of them felt like it should be more frightening, and one thought it should be more... so. Coates wanted a scarier mm -hmm. ride, and Mark Davis wanted something that was more goofy. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. Lighthearted. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was an issue. And I feel like, from what I've read, that when Walt was alive, he would put people together that didn't agree and then see what would come out of it yes um and that worked really well because he was kind of there to mediate but right. without him there to mediate it became mm -hmm. kind of an issue right um Fell but, into chaos. but then you know luckily for us what we got was both yeah so it did kind of work out i feel like all of the people that i've talked about so far and i think that's been like five have contributed in some way to what we have today in this weird perfect blend of spooky and silly and uh you know that like all of it like all creepy of, creepy yeah yeah weird and all, I, all of the things i think it works so well that you don't even question it yeah when you ride it it just is natural you know right it well, really does all come for, together for us and all all of the people who grew up with it it's like yeah, this that's is the just, mansion. yeah that it is what it is yeah it's yeah almost, in a good way it's not entirely like out of left field though because i feel like scooby-doo actually strikes kind of a similar tone yeah I mean, of being creepy and obviously it's different stylistically but like creepy and also kind of silly and funny there is a genre of this in the world and i feel like the haunted mansion if not the founder of the style the originator of the style uh definitely toes that line between creepy and silly in a way that feels so natural it's like well this is just how it always should be you know yeah 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 and i think it's a really perfect blend that lends itself to adult audiences and kid audiences yeah you know what i mean everybody love teenagers love to be scared little kids there's enough silly in it to it's keep not them... so scary right. yeah especially if you explain you know what i mean yeah and mom and dad get to enjoy the ac um, 
Um, <laughs> I'm so not. You're funny. Yeah. Um, I really do think it's a ride for like, everybody. Every, everybody. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Um, another a thing I learned, which I a lot of you probably already knew, but I feel like I heard this, but I hadn't thought about it in so long. And I need to think about it next time we go on the ride. Mm. Is that the attraction's theme song, Grim Grinning Ghosts, mm. is... Well, first of all, composed by Buddy Baker. I'm just going to... And then lyrics by uh, Exitensio. Mm -hmm. um, just to give credit where credit is due. Different versions of it are heard in all, nearly every area of the ride. Right. From the cue to what the, is being played on the piano to what is being played when you're leaving. It, it's just different versions. Mm -hmm. Which is wild. Because I, I after I read that then i listened to a part and i'm like that's not the same but mm -hmm. i'm gonna listen to it harder because it has to be because it says I've, I've read that now multiple parts well i love actually this is one of my favorite things that disney does is they take that music and then they'll have it in one key as a choral yeah. melody in one room and then they'll have it in dissidence in on the yeah. piano in another room and then it's a sing-along chorus in the next room. They did a re in this one Love particularly. That. They did a really good job of mixing it up, though. Sometimes it just sounds like Ooh! yes, exactly. Like, it just sounds like that. But if you listen to the notes, then it's got the, the same. Yes, there's even wind. Exactly, there's like a wind sound that is done to the song. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yes, yes, it's so cool. Um, <laughs> Those are the details that make Disney that, exactly. rides, yeah, you know, the one right. Um, that's so cool. There is a, a whole lore that might not even be real about what you're actually seeing when you go on the ride. And mm. I'm not going to go into it. I can go into it in a different um, podcast episode if you guys want me to. I'd have to look into it more. I know it's something about you you dying at the beginning. I think I've seen a Facebook post of this. And, and it might not be real. It might just be fan yeah, who, fanfic. What a, we should do an episode about like fan theories. Oh, we should. And whether or not we believe them. Yeah, yeah, we should. I would and we'll love make, that. We'll come to a judgment at the end of each. Yes. Whether or not we believe <laughs> it or we reject it. Yeah, so, I like that. Let's do that. Cool. And that'll I, be the first one. You know, there's the there's a, a wedding ring out in the cement outside of the... I didn't know this until very recently. Yeah. That's and that cool. that's supposed to have to do with the story oh. of the bride. Well, I figured that, but I didn't read any deeper into it. Yeah, is it supposed to have like a direct? I believe so, but again, let's let's get into this on that's that conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> that's speculation. But what's not speculation is about it being there. I've seen it. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. the actual physical ring is there, but In the ramifications the yeah. of the ring. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm about at the end here. There, I mean, there also, I don't know if I should save this, but I have heard more than once that the narrator of the story was oh. originally supposed to be the raven, and that's why you see the, a raven oh. every time you hear the ghost host talking. Now, I have also seen this, but I've never paid enough attention on the ride. I have. Oh, does yeah. it check out? Yeah, yeah. There's He's he's on a coffin when you're going into mm. the room where the guy's like, like trying to get out of the coffin. When you turn backwards going down outside of the attic, he's right there. Okay, I love that um, we don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah i prefer that it's open-ended i think that's yeah so i'll look into that one that one might but come back up. on that episode. is there a raven in the stretching room because that's when we first hear the mm. ghost host is that's there a good point a, but see i've never but like maybe this is looked. part of that lore and that's the the ghost host pre-dying and then he's the raven we need to do okay i, I I'm come, come back to the that. realization that we just need to do a haunted mansion themed episode at one point because there's yes. so much to oh talk my about. gosh i could keep going for yeah. sure um okay so now i'm going to go into updates real quick Ooh. and then do you is your story going to happen time. or no yeah okay so update time all right i'm just kind of going to breeze through this okay all right and this is going to be disneyland too in 1994 disneyland's haunted mansion was updated this is coming from the wikipedia page by the way thanks wikipedia thanks wikipedia whoever Put this together. Your contributors. <laughs> um, in 1994, Disneyland's Haunted Mansion was updated. A phantom piano player sat at a rundown piano in the attic scene. 
whereas the original faceless bride was given a full fleshed appearance. Right. Okay. In 2001, a newer, more detailed safety spiel was added to the Doom buggies mm. onboard audio as they left the loading area. They added Spanish. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay. The seasonal overlay of Haunted Mansion Holiday premiered in October of that same year. What did I say? 2001? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, featuring characters from the 1993 film uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. So they did get some IP in there after all. <laughs> they sure did. Took them a, a couple months. tries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in 2004, the seance room was updated to the crystal ball with the talking head of Madame Leota floating above its table rather than sitting stationary on it mm. with the original projection mapped effect replaced by a rear projection effect within the ball. Mm. Did they add the instruments then? I feel like the instruments have were, always been there. Yes. But like I didn't ride the original haunted mansion, so I don't know, but I always okay. feel like I remember instruments, but I don't. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just wondering. Right. In March 2011, a new interactive queue debuted at Walt Disney World. Remember that? Yes. That was a big deal. So that's the thing that has, like, it shoots water at you and all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and there's, like, you can wave your hand in in front of mm. something and it talks. And you can close drawers yeah. to open other drawers yeah. and stuff. It's like a little monster. Actually, this probably explains. With new crypts and tombstones honoring Imagineers, a murder mm -hmm. mystery for guests to solve featuring the sinister Dread family. Okay, I know nothing about that, but I will be definitely looking into that next That's time we go. That's the statues. You know, the five okay. statues. There's supposedly like a riddle there. Okay, cool. See, there's so much. And and we, so back when fast passes were a free thing. <sighs> <laughs> we always went with fast pass so i never yeah. really got to do the that queue because it's outside and mm. like Ugh. yeah um <laughs> nothing and, and scarier even than now, humidity yeah even now I, I tend to go when there's almost no wait I'm which too, is often and even when i am waiting in that line i'm too overwhelmed by the heat and the crowd of people to even want to yeah engage if it were indoors i'd be all about it yes i know i can't do outside i know stuff. well we're gonna have to like on a cool day when there's not a line see if we can go into that part yeah um because it sounds awesome you know when they updated the queue of peter pan i was like okay now i've got to go wait in this crazy line but but it was good and indoors and indoors um but i appreciate that if you're gonna have a, a terrible cue make it fun yeah yeah they did a great job yeah um anyway the composer crypt which features musical instruments that was what i was thinking of the play variations of grim grinning ghosts when touched right the mariners brine filled i don't know that word do you know that word sorry oh sepulcher yeah Sure. Whose ghost sings and sneezes from within, and a crypt for Prudence Pock, the poetess, which features haunted moving books. And see, this is, I haven't seen any of this stuff. We're no, to... the, the books are the ones where you push one. Oh, book oh, oh, got it. In, got it. And then another pops Okay, out. I was imagining I just moving didn't know, books. I didn't know there was all that backstory yeah. to each of the different, you know, activations. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Guests can solve unfinished poems by speaking into microphones located on the crypt. The Fast Pass Plus line skips the queue altogether. So that that that's why I've missed it. Mm. Um, anyway. So on April 10th, 2015, it was officially confirmed that the iconic Haunted Mansion character, the Hatbox Ghost, would return to Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. The character returned on May 9th, 2015. The Hatbox Ghost yeah. was originally a part of the attraction when opened in 1969, but was removed when the illusion involving the uh, specter's head was not convincing enough. Right. There's a lot of rumors as to why this was taken away. Interesting. Um, there's rumors as to it just disappearing and them not wanting to admit to that. Mm. Um, so they just said, but you know. That rumors. reminds me of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the Hatbox Ghost will be added to the Disney World Haunted Mansion. It, this says in new, November 2023. Girl, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Is November, the, didn't we hear 
not November 2023? No, we heard November and we were shocked because that is after the ha- the Haunted Mansion movie is out of theaters. Oh, yeah, yeah. And after Halloween. Yeah, okay, we'll see. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Yeah. No, I still want it. I'm very excited, actually. I hope it's great. Yeah. I love the Haunted Mansion getting love. Yeah, yeah, me too. And especially um, since they're not, like we talked about, they're not getting rid of anything. They're just adding a new animatronic. Yes. That's how it should be done. And when they're doing IP, they're only doing it seasonally in Disneyland. Cool. Good yeah, decision. That works for me. I know some people are mad about that, but it works for me. Well, they can stay mad for, what, three months? It's they just have to plan ahead and not go when it's being renovated. And that's what people are upset about. Right. Um, and in April 2019, PhotoPass was added. Uh, January 2020, Disneyland's Haunted Mansion was closed for an extensive refurbishment to add lighted steel panels, impromptu, improved lighting, mm-hmm. mechanical touch-ups, new paint. Refurb. Yeah, refurb. Um, cool. We didn't talk about the Escher room at all. We didn't. The MC Escher room. And I actually don't remember what was there before. I experienced the Haunted Mansion before there was an Escher room. But I don't even... I don't even know the change that happened there. What do you think about it? I feel like it blends in pretty nicely. I do too. I feel like it's actually, if anything, it's not really spooky. It's a little bit just weird. Just like the original, you know, Mm -hmm. potential Haunted Mansion was going to be a little bit more on the weird side. Museum of Weird. I feel like the Asher confusing staircase thing. It's not creepy. It's not spooky. It's just kind of weird. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Um, it, it's a it's little funny. controversial. Some people don't like it. You don't know when this was added? No, I'm um, sorry. I really thought you were going to talk about it because it's really I, it's, the only major that's change. That's supposedly the whole list of updates. Um, Wikipedia, you failed us for the first time. <laughs> How could you? Let me see. I, I, it happened in our lifetime. It says 2007. The staircases yeah. that go all over the place and the glowing footprints were added in 2007. Um... Yeah, so it says from the mansion's opening day up until 2007, the Grand Staircase used to be in pitch darkness. Oh, cool. So maybe so there it was, was nothing there. there. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, right, they had a staircase. It, it's, it's interesting because Walt really liked, I must have missed this, Walt loved the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, right, okay. and was captivated by the massive mansion with its stairs to nowhere, right. doors that opened to walls, Holes that are elevators, right? Stuff so like this, that. like this room, is par for the course. Yes. So it so really is surprising that this wasn't An original. original. Hmm. It's a good improvement, though, because Walt's the one that loved it, not one of the six Imagineers that had their hands on it. You know what right. I mean? And he's the one calling the shots. And also, it replaced um, pitch black darkness. I believe is what you just read. So that's <laughs> that's a good improvement, yeah. I think, to go from nothing to something. Yeah, I like that. See, they improved the Haunted Mansion correctly. Yeah. Here, and that's what I mean. They didn't take anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. When we do our Haunted Mansion Who could be mad? lore and speculation somebody episode. <laughs> oh, somebody. We'll talk about the legend of there being a bullet hole in one of the panels of glass okay. in the dining room Purposefully? of the Disneyland. No. A oh. guest. Oh, yeah. You told hole. me about this. Yeah. This okay. is that now this is not something I've researched, so I say we gotta do it in the future. Okay. But it is definitely at least an urban legend that we have to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited to to hear yeah, urban legends has to be the next the next thing we we research. Yeah. Which doesn't mean that's gonna be the next podcast, but it means it'll probably be within the next like month. Yeah. Um Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's super fun. I think that both of these topics were super fun. I like that there was a blend. Now you're going to tell me your creepy story. Oh, yeah. It's not very creepy. creepy? And I should sad. I should also say we did laugh at this, but this is very sad. Um, so to Disney, this was, sorry, this is a Los Angeles Times article from all the way back in 1998. Um, this was written on Christmas Day. 
Two Disneyland tourists were critically injured and a worker was severely hurt Thursday at one of the park's oldest and tamest rides when a heavy piece of metal was ripped from the Columbia sailing ship and hit visitors in the face. Oh my god. The 10.40 a.m. accident occurred as the park was packed with Christmas Eve visitors. As the tall ship was docking after one of its slow excursions around the Rivers of America attraction, a line was cast around the hull's metal cleat to secure it to the dock. So rope. Um, according to witnesses and Disneyland officials. But when the rope pulled tight, it yanked the metal cleat backwards off the boat and into two people waiting to board the ride. When did you say this was? 1998. Wow. The cleat just became a projectile. I mean, I'm really glad that they're, like, ultimately okay. You know what I mean? They didn't die. Yeah. It shot through the air and hit two visitors in the head. The injured visitors were described as a 34-year-old man and a 48-year-old woman. Um, So that, yeah, people were saying, call 911, call 911, as you can imagine. Sounds horrifying. So I had read something about this once before and thought that happened here. Here. Yeah. Um, Easy. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't happen here. That happened in Disneyland. So a piece of metal from the boat flies through the air (laughs) on tension and smacks two guests in the face. On the Disneyland version. Mm -hmm. And on this coast, we're dropping the whole boat. (laughs) So, like, I don't know. That's more laughable. Assuming nobody got hurt. Yes. Yeah. Because as far as we can tell. Because you can imagine it. Yeah. Because you've seen this kind of thing in movies where somebody drops something. on the internet. Yeah. Of, like, a boat. Not, I haven't seen somebody drop a boat on the internet. But right. Of like a boat grinding up against, you know, a dock or something. Like yeah, you, see, but, you see stuff like but that. But stuff getting dropped from a crane, I feel like I've seen on movies. Yeah. Anyway. It is cra- These are it's crazy stories. Crazy. This, the, ha- the story of the Haunted Mansion is crazy in a different way because it's crazy that we got what we got with all of the ideas in the end. Yes. When you, I've never really had someone go through and list everyone's version of the ride but now that you've done it first of all you see where everything you see in the ride comes from yes and who it comes from but second of all you are impressed with the very harmonious blend of everyone's opinion and maybe it's very democratic it's in there. funny because maybe just it's like a- the hall of presidents <laughs> sorry <laughs> um maybe it's just harmonious to us because we're used to it Mm. i I don't know apparently when it first opened there were some like oh i thought this was gonna be scary or oh i thought this would be less scary and more Hmm. mickey you know what i mean like right there was some complaining interesting well it's really it's like you you first of all you can't please everybody yeah second like especially with a haunted mansion because it doesn't quite it's a little bit scarier than what i would call a not so scary you know what i mean it's not characters and costumes right um it's got a little bit more of a haunted house feeling than that for sure but it's not like halloween horror Nights. yes i was gonna say hollow scream (laughs) same thing yeah yeah it's it's, not bloody right but remember i did find out that they did slow down those things the jumping the heads that jump up in the graveyard oh they did actually slow them down yes i'm not crazy morgan's been saying that for some time that when you get to the graveyard scene and there are the heads that pop out from behind tombstones and now they kind of slowly pop out right some of them are a little sad (laughs) they're They're sad they're sad for a purpose because they don't want to they don't want to give anybody a heart attack see that's why people complain that it's not scary enough they're slowing down the head it's not the right park for that kind of thing i guess yeah when we get into the haunted mansion on a future episode we'll also talk about how there were live actors on there at one point oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. that was cool that's... So not for the Urban Legends episode. That's for an entire Haunted Mansion extra episode. Yeah, when we we should have done it with the movie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Way. Um, great job. That was really you too. interesting. Thank you. I feel like that was a fun one. Yeah, we made a really interesting episode out of Liberty Square. I hope you guys hey agree. <laughs> have, let's go have some fish and chips. Oh, that sounds like a good way to round out <laughs> the experience for sure. Take a walk down the river. Oh God. Um, We're talking about Columbia Harbor House, in case you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we said, did we? Mm. Columbia Harbor House is right across from Haunted Mansion. Yeah, we did in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good restaurant. Yeah. Honestly, for a quick service, nice. 
our one of our favorite quick serves in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, not I, that we're I love... spoiled for choice over there. But no, yeah. <laughs> we're not spoiled for choice over there. So, but we appreciate the ambiance in there and pretty reliable. Jake loves fashion. the AC. <laughs> I do love the AC. I also love my personal space. I know, right? And I feel like how in Columbia, weird is Harbor it that you can you get, get personal space? Yeah, and we're talking about floor two. If you didn't know, we're giving <gasps> Don't away, give away the all my secrets. secrets. No, I'm just kidding. Come see us up there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, then we would love it if you are listening on a, an audio platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, anywhere you listen. I hop, I heart podcasts. <laughs> um, so shout out to our wow. I heart podcast <laughs> people. Um, please subscribe and leave a review uh, for the podcast if you enjoyed it. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, I, we have an Etsy store called Neverland Navigation yeah. where we make custom Disney vacation or whatever t-shirts. Mm -hmm. You can send a picture of a design you like and I will make a, you a shirt. Nice. <laughs> um, and then you can see the visual version of the podcast on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Neverland Navigation Co. Um, and there you can also find, like, restaurant reviews and stuff like that from inside the park. So if you're looking for a little more content, you can find us there. Or you can check out our short-form content on Instagram and TikTok at Neverland Navco. Yep, I think that does it. I think that, I think that wraps it all up. All right. Well, until next time, foolish immortals, oh we'll see gosh. you on our I missed next an adventure. <laughs> we'll see you. Oh my gosh. It's fine. We, we snuck it in there. We snuck it in there. You did. We'll see you, you on, on our, our next, next adventure. adventure. Goodbye. Bye.